Welcome back, Michael KC9PHK, here on behalf of 59 Radio. Thank you for joining us. Make sure that you're subscribed to the 59 Radio YouTube channel if you're not already. You're going to want to be aware of new videos as we release them. In the past, we made technician class, general class, and extra class license slides. We've slowly modified that into the format we have today. I'll read you the correct or the question, then the correct answer only. I will not read all the incorrect answers. If you are just joining us for the first time and you're studying for your general class, you're going to want to go back and get the previous videos in the playlist, which are set up for the general class question pool as well. This video will cover sub-element G4, which starts out as amateur radio practices. Five exam questions come from the five groups, and we'll hopefully get all those five groups into one video. G4A covers station configuration and operation. Let's get started. G4A01 says, what is the purpose of the notch filter found on many HF transceivers? The answer is to reduce interference from carriers in the receiver passband. G4A02, what is the benefit of using the opposite or reverse sideband when receiving CW? Answer is, it may be possible to reduce or eliminate interference from other signals. G4A03, how does a noise blanker work? By reducing receiver gain during a noise pulse. G4A04, what is the effect on plate current of the correct setting of a vacuum tube RF power amplifier's tune control? That's a pronounced dip. G4A05, why is automatic level control, also known as ALC, used with an RF power amplifier? That's to prevent excessive drive. G4A06, what is the purpose of an antenna tuner? And that increases power transfer from the transmitter to the feed line. G4A07, what happens as the receiver's noise reduction control level is increased? Received signals may become distorted. G4A08, what is the correct adjustment for the load or coupling control of a vacuum tube RF power amplifier? Desired power output without exceeding maximum allowable plate current. G4A09, what is the purpose of delaying RF output after activating a transmitter's keying line to an external amplifier? To allow time for the amplifier to switch the antenna between the transceiver and the amplifier output. G4A10, what is the function of an electronic keyer? The answer is automatic generation of dots and dashes for CW operation. G4A11, why should the ALC system be inactive when transmitting AFSK digital signals? The ALC action distorts the signal. G4A12, which of the following is a common use of the dual VFO feature of a transceiver? To transmit on one frequency and listen on another. G4A13, what is the purpose of using a receive attenuator? To prevent receiver overload from strong incoming signals. G4B covers tests and test equipment. First up, G4B01, what item of test equipment contains horizontal and vertical channel amplifiers? An oscilloscope. G4B02, which of the following is an advantage of an oscilloscope versus a digital voltmeter? Complex waveforms can be measured. G4B03, which of the following is the best instrument to use for checking a, the keying waveform of a CW transmitter? An oscilloscope. G4B04, what signal source is connected to the vertical input of an oscilloscope when checking the RF envelope pattern of a transmitted signal? That's the attenuated RF output of the transmitter. G4B05, why do voltmeters have high input impedance? It decreases the load of circuits being measured, on circuits being measured. G4B06, what is the advantage of a digital multimeter compared to an analog multimeter. Higher precision. 
G4B07, what signals are used to conduct a two-tone test? That would be two non-harmonically related audio signals. G4B08, what transmitter performance parameter does a two-tone test analyze? And that's linearity. Linearity. G4B09, when is an analog multimeter preferred to a digital multimeter? That's when adjusting circuits for maximum or minimum values. G4B10, which of the following can be determined with a directional watt meter? Standing wave ratio, SWR. G4B11, which of the following must be connected to an antenna analyzer when it is being used as used for SWR measurements? That's antenna and feed line. G4B12, what effect can strong signals from nor nearby transmitters have on an antenna analyzer? Received power can that interferes with SWR readings. G4B13, which of the following can be measured with an antenna analyzer? That's impedance of coaxial cable. G4C covers interference to consumer electronics, grounding, and bonding. G4C01, which of the following might be useful in reducing RF interference to audio frequency circuits? The answer is a bypass capacitor. G4C02, which of the following could be a cause of interference covering a wide range of frequencies? Arcing at a poor electrical connection. G4C03, what sound is heard from an audio device experiencing RF interference from a single sideband phone transmitter? That's going to be distorted speech. G4C04, what sound is heard from an audio device experiencing RF interference from a CW transmitter? Off and on humming or clicking. G4C05, what is a possible cause for high voltages that produce RF burns? The ground wire has high impedance on that frequency. G4C06, what is the possible effect of a resonant ground connection? That's going to be high RF voltage on the enclosures of station equipment. G4C07, why should soldered joints not be used in lightning protection ground connections? A solder joint will likely be destroyed by the heat of a lightning strike. G4C05, which of the following would reduce RF interference caused by common mode current on an audio cable? Place a ferrite choke on the cable. G409, how can the effects of ground loops be minimized? Bond equipment enclosures together. G4C10, what? could be a symptom caused by ground loop in your station's audio connections. You receive reports of hum on your station's transmitted signal. G4C11, what technique helps to minimize RF hotspots in an amateur station? Bonding all equipment enclosures together. G4D covers speech processors, S meters, sideband operation near band edges. G4D01, what is the purpose of a speech processor in a transceiver and that increases the apparent loudness of a transmitted voice signal G4D02 how does the speech processor affect a single sideband phone signal it increases average power G4D03 what is the purpose of an incorrectly uh, what is the effect of an incorrectly adjusted speech processor it's all of the above. So you get distorted speech, excessive intermodulation products, and excessive background noise. G4D04, how does an S meter, what does an S meter measure? That's going to be received signal strength. G4D05, how does the signal, does a signal that reads 20 dB over S9 compare to one that reads S9 on a receiver, assuming it a properly calibrated S meter and that's it is 100 times more powerful G4D06 how much change in signal strength is typically represented by one S unit and that's 6 dB G4D07 how much must the power output of a transmitter be raised to change the S meter reading of a distant receiver from S8 to S9 it's approximately four times. 
G4D08, what frequency range is occupied by a 3 kHz lower sideband signal when the displayed car carrier frequency is set to 7.178 MHz? That's going to be 7.175 MHz to 7.178 MHz. Because remember, we're going lower sideband, so the signal's occupied underneath. G4D09, what frequency range is occupied by a 3 kHz upper sideband signal when the displayed carrier is set to 14.347 MHz? This answer is going to be 14.347 MHz to 14.350 MHz. G4D10, how close to the lower edge of a band's phone segment should your displayed carrier frequency be when using 3 kHz? wide lower sideband. That's going to be at least 3 kilohertz above the edge of the segment. G4D11, how close to the upper edge of the band's phone segment should you your displayed carrier frequency be using 3 kilohertz wide upper sideband? And here you're going to go at least 3 kilohertz below the edge of the band. G4E covering mobile and portable HF stations, alternative en energy source operations. G4E01, what is the purpose of a capacitance hat on a mobile antenna? And that's to electrically lengthen a physically short antenna. G4E02, what is the purpose of a coronal ball on an HF mobile antenna? To reduce RF voltage discharge from the tip of the antenna while transmitting. G4E03, which of the following direct fused power conditions would be best for a 100 watt HF mobile installation? To the battery using heavy gauge wire. G4E04, why should DC power for a 100 watt HF transceiver not be supplied by a vehicle's auxiliary power socket? The socket's wiring may be inadequate for the current drawn by the transceiver. G4E05, which of the following most limits an HF mobile installation? Here is the efficiency of the electrically short antenna. It's difficult to have a large HF antenna while mobile. G4E06, what is one disadvantage of using a shortened mobile antenna as opposed to a full-sized antenna? Operating bandwidth may be very limited. G4E07, which of the following may cause receive interference to an HF transceiver installed in a vehicle? And that's all of the above, so to clarify that, it's the battery charging system, the fuel delivery system, and the control computers can all cause problems with your HF transceiver. G4E08, in what configuration are the individual cells in a solar panel connected together? That's going to be series parallel, series parallel. What G4E09 says, what is the approximate open circuit voltage from a fully illuminated silicon photovoltaic cell? That's going to be 0 0.5 VDC. G4E10, why should a series diode be connected between a solar panel and a storage battery that is being charged by the panel? To prevent discharge of the battery through the panel during times of low or no illumination. G4E11, what precaution should be taken when connecting a solar panel to a lithium iron phosphate battery? The solar panel must have a charge controller. Alright, that concludes sub-element G4. We'll conclude this video. Hopefully you enjoy this video and you'll continue on with your general class studies. Thanks for joining us today.